What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an amazing day. On our last video of that garden tour, I told you it was starting to feel like fall out here. But that didn't last very long. It has done got re-hot. And if you don't believe me, look it up. That is an official word, re-hot. Sometimes if I'm working out here, I go in the house and cool off a little bit. I come back out here, I'll get re-hot. So it is officially hot again here. Not quite as bad, not in the 90s today, but it's still pretty nasty out here. But we're going to get some stuff done in the garden today. Now, I think you already know the answer to this question, but you know what time it is? Yep, that's right. It's time. It's tater time. This video is going to be all about taters. Irish potatoes and sweet potatoes. So, a couple videos ago, I asked you guys if you wanted to see me give fall potatoes a try again. I've tried it three times in the past unsuccessfully but i know it can be done we've got plenty of viewers and subscribers that tell us that they do it successfully and i'm not going to let the idea of fall potatoes whoop me so we're going to give it a try again today and then when brooklyn and abram get back from town we're going to dig our second row of sweet potatoes the murasaki variety get those out of the ground see what kind of harvest we got from those because that's a variety we've never tried before so let's talk about growing potatoes in the fall a little bit before we put these puppies in the ground. Let's talk about why this may work, why maybe it hasn't worked in the past, and some factors that are going to play that are going to make growing fall potatoes a good bit different than growing potatoes in the spring when we traditionally do it. So one of the reasons I think that my fall potato plantings haven't really worked well in the past is because I wasn't working with the best seed stock. This year, as I showed you on that other video, using the black plastic, just that cheap plastic tablecloth from the dollar store at the road, covering my potatoes on that rack underneath the barn, they have stored significantly better, two to three times longer. Uh, usually this time of year, I would just have some shriveled up potatoes in the barn, what was left that we haven't eaten yet. And in the past, that's what I was planting. They didn't look that great. I put them in the ground and every time they kind of rotted. But this year, we have some potatoes that look really good still. Still nice and firm. And you can see there, that Kennebec there, it's got some nice sprouts on it. This uh, Yukon here has got some nice sprouts on it. So we're working with a lot better seed stock this year, which hopefully will lead to us being successful, giving this a try. Now, when we're growing potatoes in the spring, obviously we're dealing with temperatures that are warming we start out with we you know we plant potatoes down here around valentine's day so it's still pretty cool and we can still get a frost towards the end of february when those things haven't emerged from the soil yet and sometimes they have emerged from the soil and we got to cover them up to protect them from frost so in the spring obviously the temperatures are warming when we're growing potatoes right now these temperatures are cooling but starting out here the temperatures we're having now are pretty warm so I'm hoping that speeds them up a little bit. Now, ideally, I probably should have did this in the beginning of September. Potatoes, you know, you figure about 90 days, 90 to 100 days on Irish potatoes. And our average first frost is the end of November. So I'm cutting it pretty close here. We're hoping for a late frost or maybe hoping that these heat units that we're still having out here will kind of accelerate these guys a little bit. The other thing to consider is day length. In the spring when we plant these, the days are getting longer. Right now, the days are getting shorter. So we're working with less sunlight, less time for these plants to photosynthesize. That could have an effect on our fall potato planting as well. The other thing would be pest pressure. Pest pressure is a lot higher right now than it is in the spring when we're planting because it's been hot for a while. All these insects are rapidly reproducing right now. As opposed to in the spring they're just kind of waking up so we expect to have a good bit more pest pressure trying to grow these things in the fall as opposed to spring now like i mentioned earlier got lots of viewers and subscribers who tell me all the time they grow fall potatoes every year and it does great for them so fingers crossed here hoping for good results because i know it can be done now, if for some reason the frost cuts us short, we see we're gonna get a frost and we gotta go in and dig these things early and we don't get massive potatoes, that's gonna be okay. We're gonna eat a few of these, but my main goal here 
is to grow out my seed crop for the following spring. And if I can get a good rotation going here where I can grow potatoes successfully in spring and then in fall, I won't ever have to buy seed potatoes again. Unless there's a variety out there, a new variety or something I want to try. But for these solid varieties that we like to grow every year, maybe I can just keep my own seed stock going and going and going and never have to buy seed potatoes for these varieties I like, like the Yukon Gold here. We'll see if that works or not. But that's kind of my goal here. So if we get some potatoes to eat off this planting, that would be great. But I'm really going for some seed potato production here. Now, the potato seed producers out there will tell you that as generations pass, as you keep reproducing potatoes like this, that the production will decline. I don't know whether that's really true or not. Maybe they tell you that because they just want you to keep buying seed potatoes. Maybe there's some truth to it. I've heard that the commercial potato growers only grow first generation potatoes. These would be you know, third generation potato that I'm putting in the ground now. Uh, most of what, you know, people like us backyard gardeners get are second generation potatoes. So we'll have to see if there's any truth to that if we start to see some decline in production over the years. I know Danny and Wanda at Deep South Homestead, they've been planting, you know, the same potato over and over and over every year from their own harvest. And it doesn't seem like they're getting a whole lot of decline in production. So very hopeful that we can just keep regenerating our own seed supply here. Now, one thing I'm going to do different that I've never done before is I'm not going to cut these up. I'm going to plant whole potatoes. I've had a few viewers suggest that when you're planting in the fall, they plant whole potatoes. I don't really remember why, but I've seen that several times. So we're going to give that a try for the first time this year. I've also saw some people say, or seen some people say that you need to plant them deeper in the fall. I'm not really sure the reason behind that, but we're going to heal these guys up pretty tall anyway. So as far as the whole potato thing goes, the reason we've always cut our potatoes up when we're planting any other time is because we can take this and make, you know, four or five seed pieces out of it. And our seed potatoes that we buy will stretch a lot further. It's a lot more, you know, economical to cut these guys up. However, I have plenty in the barn and a lot of them are sprouting. So, you know, we're not never going to be able to eat all the ones we have in the barn. So we might as well give it a try, do a little experiment and plant the whole potatoes. I know the commercial growers always plant whole potatoes and it seems to work just fine for them. Now the theory is with planting the whole potato is you're getting all these sprouts in one spot and you're getting a lot more competition there and that you're going to make a lot more potatoes, but they're going to be smaller. That's what I've always heard. I've never tested it. So we're going to see how planting whole potatoes goes. And if the whole potato planting does fairly well, I think I'll turn around in spring and when I plant Irish potatoes in the spring, I may split my rows up. Do the first half of the row cut potatoes, the second half whole, and then we can do a really good side-by-side -side experiment there and see what the differences are between planting whole versus pieces of potatoes. Either way, we know cutting these guys up is the more economical way to do it if you're buying seed potatoes, but maybe if you've got your own stash in the barn like us, planting the whole ones might be a better way to go. So. We'll uh, be experimenting with that this fall and probably into the spring and hopefully shed some light on that subject a little bit. Now, because I'm planting whole potatoes, I am going to space these further apart because we're going to get a lot more sprouts, a lot more plants coming off this whole potato as opposed to a seed potato piece that we cut that usually only has a couple eyes on it. So where I would normally plant the little pieces with the little slivers about eight inches apart, I'm gonna go more 12 to 18 inches apart on these big whole potatoes here because we're gonna get significantly more sprouts off these guys than we do a little seed potato piece. And if any of you fall potato experts out there have any more contributions to that discussion there, any other things that should be considered, please, please put that in the comments below so we can all learn from you guys who've been doing this fall potato growing a while. Now let's go over here, let's look at where we're gonna be putting our potatoes and talk about the, I think there's five varieties we're going to be putting in the ground. So here's the plot I showed you on that last garden tour video where we're going to be putting these fall potatoes here. We've got our pitiful looking glass gem corn over there. This is where we had our popcorn that did really well. Still 
good bit of debris in here from where I mowed down that popcorn and um, got this soil tilled taters always do better for me and nice fluffy soil so we got the soil fluffed up I've already made my rows here in here made some furrows with the wheel hoe we're just going to do four rows here and I'm putting them pretty far apart I'm putting them five feet apart that's a good bit farther apart than you have to grow them we usually grow them three or four feet apart but I've got plenty of space to work with here and I want to give myself plenty of soil there between the rows to heal these guys up tall so we went five feet apart just because we've got the room here and that worked out best as far as getting four rows equidistant here in the space we're working with so i got the furrows there as you see i've already came in here and put some of this nature safe 855 down in the furrows that's good stuff we've been uh, having very good success with that so we got some of that down in the furrows as a pre-plant and we'll be fertilizing them probably with some more of that once they get up and going but um, there's our four rows that we've got over here i'll show you the varieties we're working with now these aren't all the varieties I have underneath the barn, but these are the best looking ones with some decent sprouts on them. So we'll start out here. We've got our Yukon Golds, which I just showed you. So we can see some good little sprouts on those. That's a great variety. We like that variety. Then we've got our Kennebex here, which make these nice big potatoes. And those got some really good looking sprouts on them. Some of those are pretty big. That's, you know, those right there, I think be planting those more like 18 inches apart because they're so big they're going to have so many sprouts coming off of them and we got our german butterball here which is a smaller potato but it's a very tasty potato you can see we got some nice sprouts on those guys there so we'll be putting those in the ground and i got two varieties of red taters here that we're going to plant these smaller ones here are the red norlands they do pretty good for us down here not the best uh, red potato variety we grow I'll show you the best one in a minute but it's a pretty decent solid variety we can count on we always like to plant a row of it so but I'm going to plant a half a row of these guys and then on the other half of that row I'm going to plant these which the sprouts are not quite as pronounced on but from our spring trials this was one of the best varieties we grew this is a red potato called Viking and it did really really well for us you can see the sprouts aren't quite as pronounced right there on these as they are some of the other potatoes but i think they're good enough and these are the best storing potatoes that i grew these have stored better than any of the varieties we grew in spring so i um, really excited about growing some more of these and kind of keeping a seed supply of these if we can so we're going to start off here with these big old kennebex and like i mentioned we're going to spread these puppies out compared to what we normally do and since they're so big like that, once I cover this with the wheel hoe, I might have to come in here with a rake and mound it up taller just to make sure those are covered. That's as deep as trench as I can make with the wheel hoe. So we may have to mound some more dirt on them to make sure those things stay covered until they sprout from the soil. So we'll put one right there. We'll skip over 12, 18 inches or so, put another one right there. And when I'm planting these whole potatoes like this, I'm not really concerned about where the eyes are facing because they have eyes all over them i'll try to put most of the eyes facing up you know when we're planting seed potato pieces we always plant the flesh down eyes up but these have eyes all over them so we'll just do the best we can as far as orienting the eyes upward towards the sun so they face the path of least resistance to get emerged from the soil there We got them in all them big taters sitting in them rows right there now let's cover them up see how good a job the wheel hoe does it covering these big potatoes here and see if we need to add a little more dirt on top of them after we use the wheel hoe Well, as 
as I suspected, the wheel hoe didn't quite cover up these big taters enough, so I had to go get old Manuel here. That's right, it's my right here. His name's Manuel. His last name's Labor. Old Manuel Labor, and got him raked up taller there, and uh, that should work a lot better. Now, one thing I didn't mention about planting potatoes in the fall, there's not really, I'm not aware of anybody out there that sells seed potatoes for fall planting. So you can't really go buy fall seed potatoes. Now you can go to the grocery store and get some potatoes, let them sprout, plant those. I reckon that would work. But I think the best way to do this is just save you some extras from your spring harvest or your early summer harvest. Whenever you harvest your potatoes, save you some of those to replant for fall. That's really how you got to do it. You can't really go buy seed potatoes this time of year. All right, that does it for tater time. Now it's sweet tater time. So we got our sweet tater plot here. A few videos ago, we showed you digging those row of Georgia jets there. I came in here a couple days ago. I weed eated this row of Murasaki's here. I weed eated these a little closer to the ground than I did the Georgia jets just because I want it to be easier to get those vines out of there and actually dig these guys. Those vines are in there thick and the roots are thick. And I would normally like to mow these, but my heels are too high. And I can't mow them without just scalping my heels and scalping all my sweet potatoes. So I had to use a weed eater. And man, these sweet potato vines will eat up some weed eater string. I got a good steel weed eater and I use that serrated weed eater string. And even with that stuff, you'll run through almost a whole spool just weed eating one row of these sweet potatoes here they'll just tear up some strength but um we got them weed eated we got them you know got the vines out of the way that's supposed to toughen up the skins a little bit make them you know make the sweet potatoes a little more durable during the harvest period so let me go inside grab my help and then we'll come back out here and we'll get these guys done it's time it's sweet potato time Well, that was a bit <laughs> underwhelming, to say the least. First time we've ever grown that variety, and last time. probably the last time <laughs> we will grow that variety. We did the Georgia Jets. We got one of these red buckets full and a five-gallon bucket full. So that whole row, that's all we got. Probably half of this bucket, three gallons or so. Most um, of we, them are tiny, too. Yeah, we dug a ton of roots, though, if that counts for anything. There's a lot of roots, and just not a lot of sweet potatoes. I mean, those are our best ones right there. Those three. Yeah, and those are nice. The rest They're pretty. Those. I mean, um, I should wash it off if you can see better. They got a pretty purple color to them. The uh, insides has a white flesh to it. They're supposed to be really, really tasty, but these better taste pretty dang good to be <laughs> worth all that to get that few of sweet potatoes off the 30 foot row yeah and i, I maybe it was something i did but i treated them just the same as i did those georgia jets and we got a decent harvest off those so i um, mean i went I almost know. five feet and didn't get a single sweet potato yeah it was uh it, it was a little frustrating yeah a little frustrating a abram abram left us halfway not even halfway through yeah the very beginning um i don't blame him yeah. <laughs> i was ready to go with him he wasn't he wasn't finding anything so he he said he this isn't very much fun i said amen to that it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> do all that get this dirty for that little bit of sweet taters maybe they'll taste just remarkably well i don't know if any of you out there have ever grown a murasaki or purple sweet potato let us know if you had the same experiences with them not being very productive at all you'd have to grow a big old plot of these to get uh yeah, a decent worth. amount yeah yeah i don't understand so why'd you grow them well just we want to grow well i did kind of a poll on a video asking people what varieties they wanted to see me grow and then i called my buddies at steel plant company where we got our slips and they suggested some varieties i do remember those guys at a conference back in the day telling me though that the purple ones weren't very productive oh Seems like i, I seem to forget that. that yeah i forgot huh. about it but uh now i kind of <laughs> <laughs> ding 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 so hopefully with the puerto rico and the vardaman we get a little better production something close to what those georgia jets gave us what are the rest of them look like i don't know we'll have to see I mean, the uh, rest of I mean, them are, are purple 
pretty sure the rest of them are yeah. like orange. Okay, the rest of them. sweet potatoes. Now, the the George Jets is a traditional kind of sweet potato. These other three, the Murasaki, the Puerto Rico, and the Vardaman, I believe, are what they call bush types. But I can't tell any difference between the growth habit. They all they all look the same to me as far as how they grow out. The leaves look a little different, but as far uh -huh. as the growth habit of it. But like, the, what's the potato supposed to taste like? We'll see. We'll, I mean, we'll just know. do a taste test. We usually only grow the Georgia Jets, so we'll have, oh, to, we'll okay. have to do a little taste test and uh, okay. compare them all. I want to give you guys a little update on my back. Oh, yeah. <coughs> we went to the doctor, was it last week? Sometime. Yeah. So last week, went I to the... I think it was the, this uh, week. This week. Didn't matter. It's just like five or six days ago. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, recently we went to the back Whatever. doctor, and it had been about nine or ten weeks since the injury and uh, did an x-ray and everything looks a-okay yeah. perfect praise god uh, he said you know get back in the groove of things don't overdo it but get back in there that wearing that brace for eight weeks man it just really really kind of weakens your back muscles and yeah. so it's taking a little while for me to get my back muscles strengthened back up probably get back in the gym soon and start working on that a little bit but uh, everything's completely healed. I still have a little indention there. It's not little. It's totally like you're uh, just smushed. <laughs> he said, he said, you you know, that's your uh, tattoo you keep with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Can't get rid of that. But um, everything healed up nicely. And so we're good to go. Blessed for a full recovery. Yes. Thank um, the Lord for that. For that. So good just, update there. Yeah. And uh, it's starting to get really hot out here. <laughs> So we, uh, oh I'm done tatering for the day. Got those Irish potatoes planted. Got these few dug here. And uh, we're going to call it a day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me any tips you have on planting fall Irish potatoes. And what your experiences are with these purple guys here. If you did enjoy the video. Actually, hold on. What? I forgot to mention the hat. Uh so everybody keeps asking where Brooklyn gets her hats from, so I figured I'd let you know. Oh, I feel so excited that somebody wants to know where I got something. They're from Target. Target I, is your hat source. Target is my hat source. Yes, there's a bug. Because it seems like you wear a different hat every video. Oh, no, this has been the one hat. Oh, that's the one? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's the only hat. So Target is the hat place. Yeah, I'll okay. link it. I'll, I'll send Trav the link. Okay. Send it below. Good to know. So yeah. if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. <laughs> and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh.